Hello and welcome back to the third episode in the series of How to Play Paragon. Today's episode is going to be focusing on what to buy, last hitting minions and XP, and my 3 minute push tactic and harvesters. This tutorial should make you a lot more aware of what to expect when going to a lane, the importance of some of the game mechanics, and some of the timings of structures. But anyway, let's get stuck in. Now when we're talking about what to buy, it might seem really obvious. Usually, what people will go for is the obvious health potion, mana potion, and a harvester key. Although there is some variation to this, you could, if you're a melee character for example and you were laning alone, might want to go for a ward, especially if you were in the left or right lane, because then you can ward up the entrance to the jungle and then you'll know if someone's coming to gank you. Though, if you're in the mid lane, I would almost definitely go for a harvester key, because then whichever side the jungler starts in, you can get the harvester on the opposite side to him. One thing I'm going to say really quickly is that I hope that Epic implements some other variants of uh, 1 and 2 point equipment cards. Because one thing that I like in a MOBA is uh, the uncertainty of what you're going to get in a game, and at the minute it does feel kind of pigeonholed. But anyway, let's move on to the next bit of the tutorial, which is last hitting, minions and XP. And this is when numbers start to get involved, so please bear with me, there is a logical explanation for why I'm being so boring. But just keep an eye on the timer at the top of the screen. Uh, there's going to be two clips, and you will be able to notice a big difference in card XP between the two. Unfortunately, melee characters are always going to have a hard time last hitting. And in this game, more than any other MOBA, there's a very, very good reason for last hitting. And there's a much more of a gap that you will notice. Right, anyway. So, you'll notice that in this game, when you don't kill a minion, but it dies to other means, it drops 20 card XP, which is the little orange balls on the ground. And when you do last hit, you get 100 card XP. Yep, that's right, 100. There is a 5 times gap between last hitting and not last hitting. This is a huge gap. And I'm going to be talking about levels in terms of XP and card XP in just a minute and what the difference is between them because there's a pretty big difference. And as I'm sure you're able to see here, we're getting towards the two minute mark now, and I've got one third of the bar about. And you can see that Steel's damage is really low at the early game. He really struggles, especially when you've got Murdoch just constantly popping me when I'm trying to last hit. I was gonna let you watch the entire thing, but it's actually that long. It took four minutes and 10 seconds to get one level of card XP completed and get my three card points. This, it just took a very long time. As you can see, if you don't last hit, you will fall behind. Now, we're gonna look at the second clip and you will be able to notice a big difference. And one little tip you might not know that's more obvious as a ranged character is if you last hit, all the XP comes flying towards you, like that so you don't have to go and pick it up. Now to get stuck into the numbers. The numbers for XP are level one is 100 XP to get to level two. And then after that, every level is increased by 18.18% per subsequent level. So level two will be 118.2, level three will be 139.7, level four will be 165.1, level five will be 195.1, and then it's, it just carries on from there, you kind of get the idea. If you want to go calculate it, that's up to you. Card XP works in a slightly different manner, and that is that the first level is 1200, but then it goes up in rates of 600, 400, and then 200. So level one is, as I've mentioned, it's 1200. Level two is 1800. Level three is 2200. Level four is 2400, level five is 2400, and then it just continues from there until you get to max level. So to put that into perspective, you'd need to kill four minion waves to get from level four to level five of card XP, and you'd need to kill three minion waves to get from level four to five of normal XP. Now you're probably wondering, what happens if I'm in a duo lane? Do we share XP? The answer is yes. If you buy yourself, you get 100% of all XP. That makes complete sense. Two players is 65%. 3 players is 40%, 4 players is 25%, and 5 players is 20%. So as you can imagine, this balances it out for laning, so that obviously if there's 1 against 2, you don't get the same amount of XP. Makes sense. Now have you been paying attention and looking at the timer? Because we've just passed over for the 3 points, and it was just about 3 minutes. So that saved me a minute and 10 seconds of waiting, and the enemy is probably not at their second level yet. 
And with that, it's time to talk about my 3 minute push tactic. Now I've talked about harvesters before, but I feel now that we've talked about XP and card XP in a little more depth that this should be a lot more easy to understand. What I try and do is for the 3 minute push tactic at about 2 minutes 30 I will start trying to push the enemy under the tower. Depending on who it is I might even start trying to push earlier than that because they might be equally as good at pushing. Now as you can see I've pushed him under the tower and I will start to move towards my right harvester. My reasoning for this is my jungler is in the top left, therefore if he goes to the bottom left after he's finished with whatever he's doing, he can put the harvester down in the left side. I'm here placing mine which takes 6 seconds if you have a key, it then takes about 10 seconds to build and then I can just go back to my lane like nothing happened and he is still trying to push out that wave. Roaming at the 3 minute mark will also create map pressure, meaning that the enemy laners will have to be careful and watch out for where you've gone because if they're not communicating or are in a team, the enemy or enemies that you were playing against might not have even said that you were missing, meaning that they have no idea when you went missing and have no idea where you went missing. Plus, when you're walking around in your jungle, you never know what you're gonna find. So, when I went to go get it this time, I actually found the enemy jungler was trying to be sneaky and take out our jungle. So I decided to do him a favour and let him go back to spawn early. Now to talk more about the harvesters themselves and how they can help you as a team to win your game. As you may have noticed, I like to get mine down at about 3 minutes. There's a very very good reason for this, because if you got 2 down at 3 minutes, it can provide your team with a good mid game boost in card XP. I'm going to show you the timers here and obviously this takes 6 seconds, so this was placed at 3 minutes 17. How long does it take to build a harvester? Well. That's around 10 seconds, so as you'll be able to tell, this is going to get built at around 3 minutes and 32 seconds. It takes 5 minutes for a harvester to fully fill with card XP, so while this one fills, I'm going to explain the thought behind it. When a harvester is fully filled, it gives 330 card XP, and as you may have noticed before, each minion gives 100 XP. So if you had the left and the right harvester of your jungle up and they were fully filled, you would get 660 card XP for every single member in your team, which is just over a wave of minions. So just to clarify that, you've actually just gathered 3300 card XP and split that between your team. That's going to get you a lot closer to winning, and that's only two harvesters. Now I'm sorry again, this is where maths has to come into it because I want to explain a little something. And that is that 660 card XP over 5 minutes of gathering from 2 harvesters is half a level of card XP at level 1. Now, at 13 minutes you will have gathered 1320 card XP, which is 1 level of card XP or just over at level 1. And even if you were level 4 or 5 of card XP, that would still be over half a level of card XP with no effort involved. This proves how useful the harvester is because it can get you levels of card XP above your enemy depending on how organised they are and if they actually realise how important these harvesters are. Now for my final piece on harvesters and that is that you may have noticed that the left and the right lane harvester and the orb prime harvester become available at different times. The left and the right lane harvester become available at 6 minutes while the orb prime harvester becomes available at 9 minutes. This means that the push tactic explained earlier actually becomes viable for both of those timings. Just be careful when doing it because obviously the left and right harvester are a lot more easy to access for the enemy. And I think that's about everything that I wanted to cover in this tutorial. So if you liked it, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. I've set up a Twitter and Facebook account so if you want to follow me on those that'd be great. And I hope to see you for the next tutorial. And hopefully this tutorial will have made you a better player. Hopefully I'll see you in the arena.